What is going on, everybody? My name is Michael Levan. Thank you so much for joining me today. And we're going to talk about part three of the Go and Kubernetes mini series here on my YouTube channel. Now, I know that in the first part, I did say that I was going to do, uh, I think it was mini cube, AKS, and EKS. EKS is from AWS, but I've actually decided to do GKE or Google Kubernetes engine. And the reason why is because one, I feel like there's already a ton of content out there on EKS with exactly what I'm doing here in this series. And then the other part is it is about Kubernetes and I kind of wanted to show, you know, where Kubernetes kind of started. Now it didn't start in GKE, of course, but it did start at Google and GKE is one of the best Kubernetes as a service platforms. So with that, let's go ahead and jump right into the demo. Now, what we're gonna be doing is we're actually gonna be setting up a GKE cluster from scratch. So if you've never done it before, it's perfectly fine. So I'm on my GCP account here, and if you don't have one, what you can do is you can sign up for 100% free. From here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna to go to Kubernetes Engine and I'm gonna to go to Clusters. And as we can see, the Kubernetes Engine API is being enabled. This is actually a new account that I'm setting up in GCP. So if you do see this, it's perfectly normal. Once this is complete, we're actually gonna be able to create the new cluster. And as we can see, this has now officially been set up. So what we can do is we can click the Create Cluster here. And then from here, if you have a new account, again, you're gonna see a whole bunch of tips here. We're gonna close out of this. And for the cluster, we're gonna give this a name. So we'll say YouTube GKE. For the location type, we'll say Zonal. And we'll go to, let's see, we have US Central. We'll go to US East 1B. Now, of course, depending on where you are in the world, you're gonna to wanna to kinda of play around with that in terms of the regions, but just for development purposes, it doesn't really matter, it's perfectly fine. So we can choose what GKE version we wanna use. So we'll go to 117.13, and then we'll click Create. And literally, just like that, our Kubernetes cluster is now being created. Uh, it's pretty straightforward, probably the most straightforward uh, Kubernetes as a service type of environment like this. So let's go ahead and pause the video. We're gonna wait a few moments for our GKE cluster to be configured, and then we'll be right back. And we can now see that the GKE cluster is now officially created. So what we're gonna to have to do to connect to it is very much like we had to do with the AKS cluster where we had to use the Azure CLI, we have to use the Cloud SDK for Google. So we're gonna to go to install Cloud SDK. And then what we can do here is, here's the installer here for Windows. Now, depending on what operating system you're on, you'll have to choose the best one, but I'm on Windows. So I'm gonna click Cloud SDK installer. And then while that's just downloading, I'm gonna go back to the GCP platform. And here are my clusters here. I'm gonna click on this installation right here, move this to this screen. So I'm gonna click next, I agree single user, that's fine. And then where we wanna actually store it, we'll click next here, and then we'll go ahead and we'll click install. Okay, and we can now see that the SDK has been installed. It did take a little while. I mean, it installed a bunch of different things as we can see here. So if it does take a little while on your end, it's perfectly fine and it's normal. So let's go ahead and click next. And I'm just gonna click off of all this stuff. Now, the one thing that we do wanna ensure that we run is start Google Cloud SDK shell and run gcloud init to configure the cloud SDK. And the reason why is because gcloud init is what we're gonna to use to actually authenticate to the Google SDK from our command line. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move the terminal over to this screen and we can see right here, welcome to the Google Cloud SDK. Would you like to log in? And yes, we do wanna log in. It's gonna open up a window for us. I'm gonna click on my Google account. I'm gonna allow. And then at this point, we can see that we are now officially authenticated. So now what we can do is we can choose which project we want to use. We'll go one. Okay, and then we'll choose the default region. 
Okay, so from here, let's ensure that we use, what did we use for GK? US East 1B. So we'll do US East 1B, that's number one. Okay, so now we are officially configured. So now what we can do is we can connect to our GKE cluster. So I'm gonna go back here and I'm gonna click the connect button. Let me zoom in a little bit, close out of this, and then we can click the connect button here. So as we can see, we can run this right in Cloud Shell if we want to, or we can copy it and run it locally. So we have that copied here. I'm gonna open up command line, right? And we're gonna run that command. So now we can see that we have a cube config entry for YouTube GKE. So let's run kubectl get nodes. Okay, and we can see that our official set context right now for our Kubernetes configuration is that GKE cluster. So now let's open up VS Code and we're gonna go to that Go Web API that we've been working with throughout this entire series and we're gonna use that to deploy to GKE. So I have my Go Web API open right here. Let's just go to the terminal, we'll clear and we'll, we'll ensure again, kubectl, get nodes. Okay, so we're officially set for GK. So if I ls here, I'm gonna cd right into Kubernetes and then I'm gonna run kubectl, create minus f, go kubernetes.yaml. And as we can see, our deployment is being created. If I run kubectl, get deployments, Okay, we can see that they aren't ready just yet, but we're gonna give it a few moments and then they should be ready to go. All right, we'll just check that again. We can see that our deployments are up and successful. So now let's run kubectl get service, for example. And then we can also see that our service has been created. So now let's head back over to the GKE portal. And what we're gonna be able to do from this cluster here, we can go to workloads and we can see our application running inside of a deployment. We can see all the different overview here based on different times. We can see details of the entire configuration. We can even see the YAML used for this configuration, which is quite cool. And then even if we want to, we can actually open up kubectl from the terminal here. We can click edit. And then what we can do is we can go to continue. This is gonna to connect to the cloud shell. And once this is done, we'll be able to run all of the different Kubernetes commands and kubectl configurations that we would like. From here, we're just gonna click enter here. We're gonna authorize. And as we can see our Kubernetes configuration right here, we'll just close out of this. So now what we can do is if we go to applications, we could deploy any type of application from the marketplace. So if we literally took our Go Web API and push it up to the marketplace, we could deploy it right from there. And we could also deploy, or I'm sorry, migrate any containers if we wanted to. So with that, that's how we can set up a GKE cluster and deploy a Go Web API with Kubernetes. Thank you so much for watching. Really appreciate it. And we'll see you again next time.